Hi, in this video we're looking at something called percent composition. Uh, now percent composition is just simply the percentage by mass of each element in a compound. And so let me show you an example, HF. If I ask you what the percentage of hydrogen is in this compound, it's tempting to say 50% because there are two atoms, one of them is hydrogen and one of them isn't. But if I represent this molecule by mass, I would actually change it to look something like this. Hydrogen is 19 times smaller than fluorine uh, by mass. And so this isn't even 19 times smaller than, than fluorine in the depiction. I couldn't make it that small in order for you to see both atoms on the screen. The point is most of this compound, even though it's made up of just an H and an F, by mass most of it is fluorine. And the way that you'll know that is by using your periodic table, which is a good idea to have this out for this video, um, to look up the masses of the elements and see how you know, prevalent they are within the compound. If I find hydrogen's mass, I see that it's only one, roughly, one gram per mole. Uh, fluorine, though, is 19 grams per mole. And so uh, figuring out the percent composition uh, of just hydrogen is going to involve me taking that one gram per mole and dividing it by the entire mass of this compound. So let's do that. Uh, if I put one gram per mole over the whole molar mass for this substance, which is one plus 19, 20, and then I multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent, I end up with 5%. So what that means is that 5% of the mass of a sample of HF is hydrogen, and therefore that also means that 95%, the remaining uh, you know, part of this pie chart here would be fluorine. And so that's helpful information because I can then say if I have like a 100 gram sample of HF, well, five grams of that 100 gram sample is gonna be hydrogen and the other 95 grams will be fluorine. Um, now that's a little easier because you're just essentially, you know, changing the percentages into a mass, but you could scale this proportion up or down if I had a 200 gram sample of HF, that would mean that not five grams, but 10 grams uh, of that sample is gonna be hydrogen and the remaining 190 grams is gonna be fluorine. So percent composition is useful to chemists because a lot of times we would like to figure out what the formula for something is. And knowing the percentage breakdown of each of the elements, we can actually figure out what the formula for that substance is. And if we know the formula, then we know what the substance is to begin with. So uh, first, let's just get down this concept of percent composition. And then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how it's useful. Um, so this question says, what is the percent composition of sodium in NaCl? Basically what we're doing here is we're taking the mass of uh, part of the compound. So just focusing in on one element. And then we're dividing that by the mass of the whole uh, molar mass for the substance and then just simply multiplying that by 100 to get it into a percentage. So how do we do it with sodium and NaCl? Well, uh, sodium is the part that I'm interested in. There's only one of these sodiums per formula unit. Um, I find sodium on the periodic table. I see that sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. I'm going to divide this by the entire molar mass for NaCl. So that's 22.99 plus chlorine is 35.45. And then I'm gonna uh, multiply by 100 to turn this into a percentage. So here I go, if you're typing this all into your calculator, you just wanna make sure you put the denominator in parentheses. Or I've seen some students that just do that all at once at the beginning and that's cool too. Uh, the answer I get, 39.40%. Uh, so that means if I had, for example, a 100 gram sample of salt, 39.4% of that is going to be sodium. And then the remaining percentage of it, uh, 100 minus that, would be chlorine, okay? Here's another example. This one says, what's the percent composition of, cal of nitrogen in calcium nitrate? Uh, I love this question. So this asks you to do a couple things. One, it asks you to figure out the percent composition for something, which is, what we just talked about so far in this video. But the other thing it asks you to do is to convert a chemical name into a chemical formula first. And you have to make sure you do this right because if you don't, you'll have the wrong formula and therefore we'll calculate for the incorrect uh, percent composition. So 
calcium nitrate. Uh, I got to think about charges here because this is an ionic substance. There's a metal and in this case a polyatomic anion. Calcium has a plus two charge. Nitrate, you may remember, has uh, is NO3 with a minus one charge. So I need to crisscross these charges here. In other words, I need two nitrates for every one calcium. And the correct formula for calcium nitrate is CaNO3 2. Now, if I just kind of off to the side here, I just want to figure out what the molar mass is for this, for calcium nitrate. Well, it's going to be one calcium, so Ca, one. Uh, how many nitrogens are in this? Well, two. Uh, two times a little hidden subscript one would give you two. Uh, and then for oxygen, two times three is six. So now I go to my periodic table. Calcium is 40.08. 40 uh, nitrogen is 14.01 and oxygen is 16.00. Um, you know, you're probably at this point pretty used to calculating molar masses. I've done a video on how to calculate molar masses, so if you need a little refresher of kind of what I'm doing off to the side here, I'd go find that video. Um, but really what's going on here is this. I've got 40.08, uh, I've got 28.02, and then 6 times 16. Should be able to do that in my head. I'm feeling like I'm developing a cold, though, which is sad news. But I just want to add these three numbers together then. So 40.08 plus 28.02 plus 96. The molar mass for calcium nitrate is 164.10 grams per mole. This is the mass of the whole thing. So when it's asking in my original question to figure out what the percentage of calcium nitrate is of nitrogen, well, I just want to represent the fact that there are two nitrogens on the top. So basically, I'm going to be using this number right here on the top of my fraction, 28.02, divided by, this is the whole mass, so 164.10, and then multiply by 100. And so here I go, 28.02 divided by 164.1 times 100 gives me 17.08%. 17.08%. So that's the uh, percentage of nitrogen. Now, one thing just to kind of get ahead of this, it's a common mistake to go and put 14.01 there. And we, won't, we don't want to do that because there's not just one nitrogen uh, ion in calcium nitrate. There's two of them. And so you always have to kind of represent how many atoms of the element for which you're calculating a percent composition on the top and then have the full molar mass on the bottom. That's not really going to change uh, all that much ever. So here's the next question and this one is a thinker. So this one's different from what we've done before and I want you to just kind of make sure you're uh, zooming in on this one. This says what mass of lithium chloride well, let's call timeout for a second. Let's write a formula for lithium chloride. Lithium is Li. It's in group one, so that means it's Li plus. Cl is chloride. That's in group 17. Uh, that's um, Cl minus. And so the formula for these together is just one of each. That's going to be LiCl. So there's the formula for lithium chloride, one of each. Um, while we're here, let's just figure out what the molar mass for this is. So the molar mass of lithium chloride is one lithium plus a chloride. So lithium is 6.94 grams per mole. Again, I'm, you know, pause this if you need to go and take a look at a periodic table and double check what I'm doing. But uh, 6.94 grams per mole is lithium's mass. Uh, chlorine's mass is 35.45. So I'm just gonna add these together. 6.94, 35.45, 42.39. Uh, grams per mole. So that's going to be the bottom of my percent composition uh, fraction. Now it's saying what mass of this substance would contain seven grams of chloride? That's interesting. So let's first figure out, well, what's the percent composition of chloride in lithium chloride? So here I go. Percent composition of chloride is going to be 
Uh, there's a, a CL that's 35.45 on the top. That's the part I'm interested in. The bottom is going to be 42.39. And then I'm just going to multiply by 100. Lots of calculations here. This is thrilling, isn't it? Uh, 83.63%. It's quite a bit. Lithium is pretty small. Chloride is pretty big by comparison. So that makes sense. Um, what this means, if I kind of draw a pie chart for a sample of lithium chloride, no matter what the mass is, 83% of it's going to be Cl. So that's maybe, you know, this is not going to be perfect, but that's maybe that much is Cl. And then this much here is lithium. Uh, this is 83.63%. Now the question, if we go back to the question, it's asking what mass of lithium chloride, the whole thing, this whole pie chart, what mass is going to contain 7 grams of chloride? Here's a different way to phrase that. How much LiCl do I need so that 83%, 83.63% of the sample is equal to 7 grams of chlorine? Well, kind of set up a proportion for this. So if I know that 83% of chlorine, or 83% of LiCl is chlorine, and 100% is the whole sample, I want to figure out proportionately that if I'm looking for 7 grams of chlorine, what amount of grams of lithium chloride would that be? Now pause for a second. Think about this. 83.63% of any sample at all, doesn't matter the mass of the sample, 83.63% of it is going to be chlorine and the rest will be lithium. We don't really care so much about lithium. 100% is the entire mass of lithium chloride. If you want just 7 grams of chloride, you need to figure out what amount of mass of the entire substance is going to have to exist so that 7 grams of it is 83.63%. Now the way to solve for this unknown value here, your math teacher might tell you, cross multiply. So 7 times 100, and then you just end up dividing by 83.63. Let me show you what this looks like. Um, you're going to cross multiply here. That means 7.00 times 100 is equal to, and then multiply this way, I'm going to use x for that uh, unknown value there, 83.63 times x. And then the way to get x by itself is just to divide both sides by 83.63. Now, the more you do cross multiplication, the faster you get at it because you start to realize what you're going to end up doing before you have to write it all out. Um, and so x is going to be equal to this. So this is really what I'm typing into my calculator. 7 times 100 divided by 83.63 gives me 8.37. 8.37, I'll put this up here. Uh, 8.37 grams of LiCl gives, or contains, I guess you could say, uh, 7.00 grams of Cl. Now, what I like about these types of problems is that you can always check your work you know, uh, what I would be doing is taking 7 grams, dividing it by the total mass to figure out if that's going to give me 83.63%. And if you do that, I mean, pause the video, check it yourself, you'll see that that is the right uh, percentage there. So um, why does this matter? Well, if you know you've got lithium chloride and you know you need, for maybe some other reason, 7 grams of chloride, you'll know that you need to take 8.37 grams of lithium chloride to give you that amount of just regular old chloride. Okay, so that's percent composition. Now, like I said, uh, percent composition is most often used to figure out what an unknown substance is. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can use percent composition information to determine what the empirical or even molecular formula of a substance would be. Now, what's an, empir an empirical formula? What's a molecular formula? Uh, that's also going to be contained in the next video. So press on. Thank you.